Welcome everyone. Today we'll learn how to deploy an Azure function and connect with an Azure SQL database. So the first step is to create a new Azure SQL database. So in the Azure portal, I will create a new one, fill the form, so select the subscription, select the resource group, define the database name, select a server, I will create a new one, define the name, it will set as HTTP trigger DB function, select a location, and for the authentication method, I will use SQL authentication by defining the server uh, name and the password. Click OK to create a new server. Scroll down, we'll set the defaults for the SQL Elastic Pool. And for the Compute and Stretch, we'll select another tier. So select the basic one for simplicity. Click Apply and select locally redundant backup stretch and go to the networking tab. Yeah, it's important in the connectivity method. Click public endpoint and in the firewall rules, we'll set or we'll access this database for our client IP address. So select yes. And we'll also allow Azure services and resources to access the server. We'll activate this feature in order to test our Azure function in the Azure portal. So scroll down and click review and create. Create the resource. Let's wait a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, go to Visual Studio and create a new project. Select the Azure Functions project template. Define the name. Click Next. For the Functions Worker, we'll select .NET 8 isolated. And we'll select an HTTP trigger function to create a new one. And let's keep it Azure it for runtime stretch account locally. If you want to learn how to use Azure, you can check out my video. I'll provide the link in the description below. And let's keep the authorization level as function. Click create. This is our HTTP trigger function. I will copy a sample code. So basically this function will create a new product table for a database. So we'll check if the product table exists. We'll drop the table if exists. Then we'll create the product table with three columns, ID, name, and price. And then we'll add two rows. So basically we'll get the SQL server connection string by using environment.getEnvironment variable. We need to set this connection string in the local settings.json file. So go to this file and copy the respective connection string. Locally, we'll use SQL Express database. Go back and we'll create a new SQL connection. So we need to install a NuGet package called Microsoft.data.sql client. Install the latest version. So we'll create the connection, open the connection and create a new SQL command to run the query to create the product and add the two products, the two rows in the product table will return that the database changes are completed. Let's test the Azure function locally. So run the project, open the function URL to trigger the function. To execute the function, the database changes are completed. So to verify that, go to Visual Studio and open the SQL Server Object Explorer and add a new connection. So click in this icon to add a new connection, define the server name, which will be the SQL Express server name. It will be Windows Authentication, encrypt, let's set it as false, and let's trust the server certificate. Click Connect, expand the databases, and we see we have the shop database. And in the table section, we'll see the new product table. Right click and view the data. And we have the two products already added in the product table. So far, so good. Stop the application and now deploy this function to Azure. So click in the Solution Explorer, right click over the function and click Publish. Select Azure, select Azure function app for Windows as the target. Click Next. And here we need to select a subscription from Azure. Create a new Azure Function app. Define the name, the subscription, the resource group, the plant type, the location, the Azure storage, and let's disable application insights. Click Create. So the Azure Function app is created. 
So click finish and the publish profile is added. Close the window and before testing the function in Azure, we'll add the connection string to connect with a SQL database. Okay, so in the hosting tab, we'll click on this menu and click manage Azure app service settings. So for the remote connection to the SQL database, we'll copy the connection stream for our new Azure SQL database resource. So go back to the Azure portal and open the new database resource. Scroll down and connect to the application to see the connection stream. Copy the value. Go back to Visual Studio and paste the value. Replace this password to the password you defined. Click OK to set this value. And that's it. Now click the Publish button to deploy the Azure function. It will take a couple of seconds. So open the output tab. The function app is ready. The Azure function app is published successfully. So in the hosting tab, click the menu and open the Azure function in the Azure portal. Click in the function name, which is our HTTP trigger function. We'll test this function in the Azure portal. So click this test and run button. For the input, we'll keep the default parameters. So click the run button. So we need to configure costs for this function. So copy this origin to allow Azure portal to run this function at the origin and click save. Now go back to our function and click test and run again. Run the function. As you will see the response content, the database changes are completed. So go back to Visual Studio and connect with the remote database. So add a new connection in the SQL Server Project Explorer. So we need to copy the server name. So go back to the database resource, go to the overview tab, copy the server name, go back to Visual Studio, select SQL Server Authentication, define the username and the password, click Connect. So expand the remote database. As you will see, we have the shop database. Refresh the tables and you will see we have the product table. Right click to view the data. And we have the two products added. So the Azure function was executed successfully from the Azure portal. Go back and in the function, we can run the function by copying the URL. So click in the get function URL, copy the first link open a new tab and open the URL. The database changes are completed. So this is a second option to trigger the function. So in this demo, we learn how to deploy an Azure function and connect with an Azure SQL database.